Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I met a man who told me I started my business with 6,000 Naira. There's barely anybody who has not had 60,000 Naira. His business is worth close to 5 billion now. And he said, and I noticed his life when he started his business, he wouldn't do, no, this, he wouldn't even buy clothes. You see him, he's washing clothes, doing laundry, and <laughs> he doesn't wear fine clothes. His works, they would take light. You see him in the office, it was hours upstairs, he was living downstairs. He would put on candle till 9, 30, 10, 11, and he's still working. I find it difficult to relate to somebody who at 9 a.m. in the morning is still in bed. I personally believe, except they're established in their business, I don't think such a man can ever make it in this life. That's my personal opinion. 7 a.m. is in the office. 10.30, he's working. Why they say strong men retain riches? If such a man comes for assistance, you assist him. When I see the one that is sleeping at 10 comes for assistance, I will not assist him. You don't deserve it. I guess I resent laziness and it irritates me to be laid back on a man. Even if I don't have a job, I'll be up 6.30 in the morning ready for any emergency call to answer to. Not because I don't have a job, 10 a.m., I'm still in bed, and I'm still stretching, I'm, and I'm still sipping tea. Is a strong man retain riches. There's this latest now happening everywhere. People are... I have no issue with someone betting. I know some people have made money from betting, right? It's okay. Ah. Mm. Jesus. The man is dying and he spends his money on betting and he needs 100 and I have a trillion. I will not give him. I won't give him. Those are tough decisions I have. If you spend your money on betting, I won't give you a dime even if you're dying. I will not do it. It's another, I believe, satanic way of caging these people, especially men. It's more men you see in it. Caging them and destroying their lives. They are betting morning till evening. They are locked up somewhere. I don't know what they call it. Doing all sorts of pools. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Then he'll come and meet you in the evening that he has not eaten since the morning. Then you give him money. God will deny that man having money. Say so you are a wasteful investor. That's why they say strong men retain riches. Like I said the other time in Galatians chapter 6, say, bear you one another's burden and let every man bear what? His burden. If you don't have a job, you have a wife, you have kids, and I'm assisting you for two years, I'll check your life. If I don't see any improvement, if I don't see improvement financially because you can't get a job, and I don't see any improvement spiritually, meaning you are drawing closer to God, I'll cut down on the aid. Why am I saying that? You don't have a job for two years. I'm running your home. And in those two years, your strength has failed you. Then if you're serious, run to God. Yet you come late to church. You are not in any unit. You are not prayerful, I'll cut down the aid. That's why they say strong men retain riches. Oh, no, 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 no. No matter if you, even if my biology, I'll cut it down. But if I see improvement spiritually, then I leave it. Meaning, I can see effort on your part to make it. I can get you a job, I don't do the job for you. I mustn't be more eager for you to make it than yourself. And everyone should wise up. I didn't say don't help people. Did you hear what I said? 
If I'm helping you, and in two years, I'm helping you with your children's school fees. I'm helping you with your rent. I'm helping you with feeding. In two years, you have not helped yourself. Okay. Maybe the time has not come. You're still running around. I understand. But in those two years, on a Sunday morning, you are sleeping. No, you get no help from me again. I will cut it down. Because meaning, you are a laid back and irresponsible human being. And that's why you are the way you are. Strong men retain riches. Be strong. Don't waste your steward of God's word. Don't waste it. You should tell him, are you fasting? Take it easy. You see him losing so weight. Why are you losing weight? You are waiting on the Lord. Please, take it easy. What is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. I will help them all. But son is sleeping. They call businessmen prayers to pray for breakthrough. He's sleeping. Why? He knows the brother will bring the food. No, I'll cut it down. You will not have it. I'll cut it down to make your essentials. And everyone should know that. The day they give you 100,000, I want to know what you did with it. You played pool, I'm done. You don't get a dime again. Wake up. Strong men, money is for the strong. Your body says, money is in the mouth of the lion. Help, or don't be stupid in your helping. But help, don't be foolish in your helping. But what? Help. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sounds tough, everybody's quiet. That's why many people don't retain riches. You are a steward of money. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I guess I'm not preaching now. I'm just exhorting and I don't expect returns when I help. But when I expect returns, I expect returns in certain ways, not necessarily you come and give me back. I met a lady going through tough times, abandoned by the husband. Sorry, I spoke with a lady that we'd never met. Explain what to me what she was facing Things were bad with a little kid, and it was really bad. And I asked, what can I do to help our pray? I said, yes, but this word I can, you know, it, it's, praise God. They said, when money increases, the mouth that feeds from it increases, meaning you will help more people. But if the Lord gives a talent, and comes back to appraise, to see what you have invested it in, to see whether there's a profit or not, meaning all charities are investments. All charities are investments. Because those gifts are gifts of grace, and the Bible calls it an investment that must yield, meaning... You must make assessments of your investment, even if it's to charity. For example, if I'm a church and I'm giving to the less privileged and they're on the streets and I give you food in the morning, give you food in the evening, give you every day, I expect one day that you come and worship. If you're a young man, and I'm giving, and I'm, I expect one day, if you don't have a job, to come and say, what can I do to help, to make your job easy? Praise God. Praise Jesus. Every giving of the Lord is an act of grace, yet he expects a return. So all charities must breed returns. Not necessarily in cash. I support a man who doesn't have a job 
And in one year, before I didn't have a job, the house was in hell. And in six months, I hear he's still beating up his wife. There was the essence of my supporting you. I'm supporting you so that you don't get agitated to make the house peaceful. Yeah, you are yet to get a job, and you are still beating your wife. I expect a return of a karma home. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll leave that. Don't let me go further. Let me stay so I don't scare you. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Your children, the investment on education is an investment of grace. It's your duty to send them to school. But you expect a return. Not for them to give you money. Of their results to be good. So if you are putting money and the result is bad, then at one time you should stop and ask, what's the problem? The money seems to be going down the drain. Yes, it's my duty, but I need to find out why are you not passing your exams? Do I need to pump in more investment? Or I need to readjust and realign my investments? So it's not all giving that expect the same return as the giving. But every giving must have a return. And you must work with that mindset. Otherwise, you will not retain riches. There's nothing wrong if I give you rice, food, pay your rent, pay your children, buy your clothes, fuel your car. There's nothing wrong. But if after six months, I don't see anything to show that either spiritually or in peace or in effort, that giving has yielded anything, I'll cut it off. I'll cut it off. Praise God. Hallelujah. I may not cut it off completely, but I start trimming it down straight away. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ah. You are a steward of funds. And in the parable of the talents, the Lord increases his investment in your life through proper use of his investment profitably. I want to ask, if someone asks for money to do business and in a month he's broke, then you help him again, he's broke. You help him again, he's broke. Will you give him again? No, 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 no. Neither with the Lord. We're a steward of, of resources, of riches, and finances. And the owner can make demand of his funds at any given time. Matthew 25. From verse 14. Now, it's a long reading. I don't want to... Um, Go through all that. But in that story, the Lord asked the man with a single talent. He said, since you didn't know what to do with my investment, why didn't you put it in the bank? Take note. Maybe I need to read this for you to see this. Then verse um, 24. Then we which had received one talent came, said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. Gathering where you have not strawed, I was afraid when and hid thy talent in the earth, lo, there thou that, that is thine. The Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. You ought therefore to have put my money. Now the Lord didn't call it his money. He said, my money. Money. So all the money in your hand belongs to God. Take note. Take note. He said, you ought to have put my money to the exchangers that at my coming, I should receive my own with interest. So the Lord is not dilly-dally to make it clear that that money is mine. So you are a steward of it and you will give account of it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are a steward of riches, and you will give account 
of the riches in your care. When you know this, then you don't just spend money anyhow. Praise the Lord. So you must understand that the riches, the money, dollars, pounds, euros in your account is not yours. The Lord was emphatic about it. My money, my interest. So even the extra on it, the Lord is laying claim to it. He said, it's mine. It's not yours. It's mine. And the servant didn't dispute. He said, I kept your money. Here is your money back. So there is no dispute about the owner of the resources. Say, I have a company. It belongs to the Lord. I have an NGO. It belongs to the Lord. I have an outfit. It belongs to the Lord. I have cash. It belongs to the Lord. And it will come and ask you, what did you do with the money I gave you? You must render account. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. Praise God. And some of the mindset, if you imbibe, like for example, all outflows must have returns. Whether in charity or investment for business, it must have what? Return. It must have what? Return. Praise God. Let me ask you one question. If you, if there's a woman by the house next to your, maybe a shop near your house, you are going out of the house. She comes to kneel down and says, oh, I'm so sorry, please. My rent is due. Lando wants to throw me. How much is your rent? And you give her 20000 And the next day you drive past, you greet her. She doesn't greet you. What will you do? And then after a while, she comes to meet you. My children don't ask, will you give her? That means unconsciously you expected a return of greeting. Without realizing it, the Bible says when he healed those 10 lepers, he was expecting thanks. Not cash. Have it in your mindset. There is no outflow without a return. If you help the person and you say, Do you, if your friend is with you, he says, you won't believe that woman. I still gave her 20000 to pay her rent three days ago. I agree. Say, maybe she didn't hear you. Wait, let me. Say, my dad, good morning. Just looks and hisses and continues to walk. That means, now, if you didn't give her a dime, and you greeted and she didn't answer you. You say, I beg, let's go, Jerry. I even have more important things on my mind than greeting this one. You're not upset. But because you gave her some money and you greeted and she didn't answer you, you're upset. Unconsciously, you have expected a returns in greetings. So every outflow must have a return in any form whatsoever. Praise Jesus. Riches can ransom a man's life. Proverbs chapter 13. I'll read verse 8. The ransom of his man's life are his riches. It sounds very unfair, but that's just the word of God. Meaning, you can use riches to appease a divine authority. That's what it means. That's what it means. You can't bribe God. Zacchaeus was a condemned man, the short man waiting for Jesus to pass. He said, of all I wrong, he said, I will give back four times. Jesus said, salvation has entered into your house. In Mark 14, 
there is a prostitute who the Bible acknowledges her sins are many. Obviously condemned. The Bible says she gave a year's wage of the Alabaska box of ointment to Jesus. I don't know how it works, but that's just how it works. And the Lord said, all her sins. She didn't ask for forgiveness. The Lord said, all her sins, which are many, are hereby forgiven. So riches can appease the divine and ransom a man's life from the clutches of death. Riches are not evil because they say the prosperity of a fool is his destruction. So what's the prosperity of a righteous man? It's gladness, it's joy, but the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, I guess so many people know this, but people try to avoid it as much as possible. The love of money is the root of all evil. So meaning behind all evil, consciously or unconsciously, there's money involved. Behind all evil, there could be lust of other things, cares of other things, uh, deceit, all sorts of things, but behind all evil, there's an element of riches. Behind all evil. Now, money doesn't cause the evil. So meaning, the Bible says, don't have too much respect for money. Otherwise, it will drag a man into evil. But having money without too much respect, passion for it is still safe. So money doesn't cause evil. But the love of money and he says of Isaiah Alexander, who haven't loved so much money, has departed from the faith and has suffered shipwreck. That was Paul talking about one of his accomplices. Praise the Lord. I've heard people say without money, the gospel can't move. That's not true. Without faith, the gospel can't move. It will move without money. Elijah moved for three and a half years without money. Ravens fed him and the barrel generated oil and crews of its own without exchange of money. He was sustained for three and a half years. The children of Israel for 40 years, without buying and selling, were sustained without money. So the gospel can move without money, but money without the gospel is a disaster. Amen? In that verse 6, if you jump to verse 10, say the love of money the godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world. It's certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be there, we be content. But they that will reach fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some haven't covered after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Proverbs 28, verse 20. Proverbs 28, verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. You go to verse... Um, Verse 22, he that hastened to be rich hath an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. He that is in a rush make money. Now, you should want to make money. You should desire to make money. You should wish to make money. You should love to be rich. But if it consumes a man in a state of passion, then it will destroy him. And finally, riches are not forever. 
Proverbs 27, chapter 27, I'll read from verse 23. I know you want me to preach and say, God said money is coming, and money is coming. So why is he saying this? So that when it comes, you will know what to do. This message is to prepare you for money coming. So that when you come, you will not be found wanting. Proverbs 27. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks. Look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever. And doth the crown endure to every generation. Why is riches not forever? I guess I explained that before. If you give houses, cars, to a man that has no wisdom. You know, Solomon said, vanity of all vanity. And all is what? Vanity. He said, I looked and I saw that I had by wisdom gained all these riches. Then I asked myself, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Who will inherit this? What if he doesn't have my wisdom? What will he do with all his wealth? Obviously, you know what's going on. He's going to squander it. So riches are not forever. Why? Because they are transferred. Not through a lot. But through skills. Services. Principles. Investments. That's how they last. So... If you build a refinery and you are rich or you build a, a factory, I'm trying to, I don't want to mention, look like I'm talking about somebody. You build something big, at least seven of them, they can't suffer. <coughs> the one in, there's a house in England. There are two houses in America, Baltimore, south of France, and you list everything. The day you die and they... Bury, they start listing how to start selling. How to start what? Selling. That's why they say riches are not forever. The Rechabites lasted what they have because they have bibed principles. That's what makes the riches last. So if you want your investment to last, are you getting it? Don't say your children come, daddy, want, want to fly in a jet to Abuja for holiday. Say, let's go. No. So you want to go in a jet? It's going to cost 15000 25000 Now, that's a luxury. I'm not going to pay for that. If you want that kind of money, let's go to my office. I'll give you work to do. I'll tell you your pay pack. You have three months holiday. You can save up for it. When he grows up, he will not be wasteful. You must report to the office by 7.30. When he grows up, he will not be sleeping 10 a.m. in the bed. That's how riches last. Did you hear me? Yes, so, the problem is not the problem. You can leave it for them, but they must have the capacity to manage it effectively through skills, acquisition, divine principles, and discipline. I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.